Hello, I'm Don Durham, and welcome to Patent Pod. I want to assure all of you who are listening, Patent Pod and the entire patent system remains dedicated to providing professional development to educators and support for families and students during these unprecedented times. Today, we have one of the state leads of the Autism Initiative, Amiris Depuglia, here to do some resource sharing with us. Hi, Amiris. Thanks for joining Patent Pod today. It's a pleasure to be here, Don. I want to. Um, have a little conversation regarding the continuity of education. And we know that some educators are struggling to implement this plan. And we would expect a little bit of um, kind of transition time from our more traditional instruction to this more at home learning kind of instruction. But as we think about the complexities, when we think of our students with autism spectrum disorder, you know, that adds a layer of challenge that we have to account for. What resources can the Patent Autism Initiative offer to educators to assist with these continuity of education plans for our students? So the Autism Initiative, with the help of all the consultants that are assigned to the Autism Initiative ABA supports, have developed several resources for teachers to be able to look into in order to help them in their planning process as well as during instructional decisions. So some of those resources include a continuity of education planning sheet, which is intended to help teachers look at specific questions and considerations when making decisions in regards to what does instruction look like for a particular family. So it's going to walk them through basically meeting with the family, what questions can they ask to help make those decisions, what might instruction look like, what are other details they need to ask, and then considerations for the instruction itself. We have also put together a list available both for families and for the teachers, which is a resource list of websites and apps that are organized by learner level as well as by grade level. So those resources have been organized for early learners, intermediate learners, advanced learners, as well as early childhood and elementary, and then middle school and high school. And each of those categories then has a section where there is resources that are for planned instruction. So it's actually instructional content that can be used for planned instruction another section for enrichment, instructional enrichment, and then a separate section even with some leisure activities that have a lot of interesting websites and apps where parents can have the children engage in things that are appropriate. As far as leisure goes, for example, even going into the San Diego Zoo that has free cams. And so it allows them to have different options like that. In addition to that, we also have selected out some video links that could be helpful for teachers to use for their own professional development, as well as during these times, many of the paraprofessionals aren't necessarily interacting with students, but this is a perfect time to take advantage and provide some professional development. So there's some videos. We've also included the links to the last few National Autism Conference archives, so they can access those and develop some, some home ideas, practice sheets that the teachers can use to help carry over some of the things they've taught in the classroom. So it sounds like um, on our patent website, www.patent.net, you have really curated um, quite a few resources in regards to planning of instruction, decision making for our students, actual um, aspects to think about when we're delivering the instruction, but then you also um, shared that these resources are kind of divided out by age spans and by grade spans, which I think is helpful in kind of narrowing down where educators need to go to find these resources because it can be very overwhelming when people start to share resources, especially now as more and more um, entities are doing that. And I, I appreciate that you mentioned this may be a perfect time to think about professional development for our power educators or even for our educators to take advantage of this time. And as you had indicated, the Autism Initiative, the patent website has shared a lot of those resources and that may be somewhere we wanna be digging into. So thank you for highlighting those pieces. I appreciate that. 
I want to um, ask you, though, you know, I know with the autism initiative work that goes across the, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, there are many districts who are not currently receiving direct technical assistance and consultation from your team. Those districts that are not receiving those services directly, can they still access these resources? Absolutely. The resources are available for everyone online. And while all the Autism Initiative consultants have made already contact with all of the districts and they are available for consult, whether it's on a platform like this, a Zoom meeting, we've already provided some in-service trainings, we've provided some consultation for those sites. But in addition to that, we do have an email set up. It's autism at patent.net. And any site that we don't directly support who we would not have reached out to directly, if they have any questions, they would like a consult, they need any kind of support, then they can contact us at that email and set up an appointment and one of us will reach out to them. We've already been able to reach out to some districts that we don't support directly. I think that's a valuable resource to have. So that I want to repeat that again, autism at patent.net would allow um, anyone in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania to have a direct connection to the experts in the field in our, in our system. So I, I so appreciate that you've established that. And again, I think that um, I want to highlight, it's not just those districts who directly receive um, technical assistance and consultation from your team, but anyone can access um, your team at this point in time, as, as that's our goal is to reach out to as many educators, parents, families, caregivers, students, to ensure everyone has what they need. So thank you for thank you to your team for making themselves so available. And as you had said, they've already been engaged in some of those trainings and opportunities. So that's wonderful to hear. If I could just pivot for a moment, you know, being a parent myself, and I know that you are as well, when we think about the challenges that parents and caregivers are now experiencing with this continuity of education and implementing this learning at home, what can we share with them and what resources might they have access to? So Don, that is a great question. And I think from day one, when all this happened, it has been probably our primary concern because of course, all of our support to the teachers is because we all care about the students, right, and their families. And especially during these times and understanding that there are so many families out there who may have at home several children, sometimes several children, all of them with disabilities and just going through all different struggles. So we have put together specifically on the website some resources for parents. Um, we've developed several sort of tip sheets on things parents can do. For example, how to talk to your child about COVID-19, general guidelines to supporting your child and just getting through the day throughout these times. Um, one thing that we know is, is an extreme need for most of the students who have autism spectrum disorders is the communication needs. And there are so many families who have children who aren't able to communicate even their basic wants and needs. So we have a resource on how to teach your child to ask for what they want. Some other resources in terms of how to just engage them throughout the day, include them through daily activities and routines so that what the parent has to do doesn't add burden to their day, but rather looking at what do they do at home and then how can they incorporate their child in those activities, how to teach them independent skills. Uh, another one is how to set up for example, an activity schedule where even though there might be families where having a schedule with specific times may not be feasible, just even helping parents on how to set up a routine where one activity follows another on a regular basis can be very helpful for families as, you know, there are many families who are working from home, like I said, have several children. We will continue to update. We're working on several more documents right now. Um, such as, you know, how to prevent and minimize problem behavior. We know that challenging behaviors are, you know, prevalent in many homes. So trying to guide families with that and several other documents that hopefully will provide some relief to parents. Uh, my message to parents would be the documents, you know, we've made an attempt to make them as simple as possible, but even so, they might be so overwhelmed, they might not understand it. So feel free to reach out to the teachers and, if they were to need any specific um, 
information or guidance in regards to instructional plans or anything like that for the students, for their children, then they can also access the email autism at patent.net and make an appointment to speak to one of the consultants directly. Of course, understanding that we're not part of the IEP team and everything that's being provided is ultimately the decision of the district, but we're here to help families through anything they might need during these times. There are no boundaries during these unprecedented times, as you said, other than the boundary of our role as training and technical support. I think knowing that there are resources specifically built for parents and caregivers is a comfort um, to all of us who are now at home um, providing this instruction or assisting with this instruction. So I appreciate that. And, and as you had said, you know, sometimes it's just as simple as how do you get through the day? How do you um, arrange for routines? How do you keep as much consistency as possible? Knowing that a lot of our students, um, especially those with autism spectrum disorder, need that consistency, need that routine, need to know what's coming next, that predictability factor, but sometimes that's challenging to do in the home. So just knowing that there are some of those basic resources. And as you had said, um, the, you know, this site is constantly being populated and updated. So it's not a come to it once and then that's all we have to offer. It's continually visiting the patent website and the autism initiative web, um, web page specifically to get these resources. So I'm so appreciative of that. And as you had said, parents and caregivers can reach out to your team through that email, autism at patent.net to um, speak with someone in assistance, knowing that you know we're offering simply some guidance, some training, some consultation, uh, but we're not ultimately part of the IEP team. So I'm glad that you mentioned that specifically. Thank you for that. You know, Maris, it's, it's, it's wonderful to see everyone coming together to support the situation that we're now in. This is something we are, we are all in together and we will get through it together, but it's great knowing that we have um, people like you and your team here at Patent to help us all do that. So thank you so much. And thank you so much for joining Patent Pod today to kind of do this resource sharing with us. My pleasure, Dawn. And it's great to be able to put, you know, your grain of sand in to collaborate with such an effort during these times. So thank you. And also for anyone listening, you know, the resources that we've provided, even though they're intended for children on the autism spectrum, it doesn't mean that they're only applicable to such. So, you know, some parents may find helpful hints there for any child. I think I appreciate that. And thanks for making sure that we mentioned that. Thank you to all of you in the field. You inspire your students every day and you're inspiring all of us that much more right now. A special thank you to John Ragsdale for producing this podcast. We'll see you next time on Patent Pod. Stay safe. Be well.